Hello everyone, my name is Voodoo, and welcome to the Talent and Rotation Guide for Vengeance Demon Hunter for Season 2 of Dragonflight. In this video, I'll be going over the talent builds and how to use them to get the most out of your Vengeance Demon Hunters in Patch 10.1 of Dragonflight. Now, before we get into this, my gearing guide, going over gear, equipment, um, embellishments, and stats, is actually split into a different video. I posted that on Monday, so if you want to know those things, go check that out. Also, shout out to the people from the Vengeance Demon Hunter Discord, Topol, Mayra, Atame, and everybody else who helped with this video. Now that out of the way, let's get into the video. So first off, we're going to talk about talent builds. Now, Vengeance actually has a few different talent builds, depending on if you have the tier set or not for Mythic Plus. However, we're going to start with Raid first. Now, Raid, there's really only one or two options. This is going to be your raid build for most of the situations you'll be in. On the tree here, you can see we go on the left and right sides. That's for two reasons. One, the frailty system is just very, very powerful for Vengeance Demon Hunter. It gives you a ton of leech, tons of damage, and tons of defensiveness. Uh, you have different things um, causing you to just deal more damage, uh, causing you to take less damage, and causing you to also um, leech with frailty, which is way up here. You'll have 10% of all damage you do. So frailty all interacts together. Uh, both of our spenders being Spirit Bomb and Soul Cleave, which like I guess I can show you down here, um, both apply this. So that's kind of your main resource with this build as Vengeance Demon Hunter. And the right side of the tree is stuff for Brand. Um, brand works really well because of the tier set. You have very high Brand uptime. It's like a 40% DR uh, right here and also a ton of damage. Um, it's like 31,000 damage. And then it says zero fire damage over 10 seconds. I actually don't know why. Uh, it's more than that. It's actually a ton of damage often. And you'll see it very high up in your damage meters. Um, so that's kind of the main idea here for raid. Um, basically just grabbing a lot of damage stuff. You don't really need defensiveness that much in raid. Um, all this here is for like the most damage possible. Uh, as, as well as just like a nice little bit of survivability when you do need it. Uh, basically just like demon spike stuff. Um, I beam stuff. Uh, Dark Lair. Sorry. Fell Devastation stuff. I beams the Havoc one. Uh, and then just some other general, just uh, improved damage, improved free generation, damage, uh, you get two charges. So nothing too complex or crazy with this one here. Uh, now, if you're in a raid situation and you need to, there's like multiple targets, then you just simply drop out Cycle of Binding, grab Burning Alive, uh, and then it's the exact same thing here. Uh, nothing too different there. The other thing too with this build is you can choose between uh, Elysian Decree and Fart of the Flame. Uh, not too big of a difference between the two of them. Uh, Elysian Decree got a lot better because of the soul fragments it gives you, which means um, you know your tier set kind of cycles through more. Um, this one here, Fart of the Flame, still very, very good. I would say fodder probably in raids, unless you're fighting multiple targets. Um, fodder is still very, very strong. Uh, on the class tree side, uh, you'll generally be seeing this for lots of scenarios. You can't really grab the uh, CC too much. You can drop out some points to get it. Um, you can drop stuff like Fellfire Haste you need in prison or something like Consume Magic or you want to grab Charred Warblades for some reason. Um, but, you know, that's kind of a flex point there. Uh, and then down in this bottom part of the tree, you always want to come down and grab Collective Anguish. You always want to come down and grab Quick and Sigils. And you always want to get down to the hunt. Now, if you don't need Darkness, uh, then you should, should go through Soul Sigils, come down here and just grab this. Uh, however, if your raid needs you to get Darkness, then you can drop out Soul Sigils, grab Darkness and come down like this. If you need like quicker darkness or something like that, then really your only point to drop is going to be um, the dot increase on the hunt like that. However, you know, if you have a Havoc, I would have them do it. But, you know, if you don't, then this is probably going to be the, the node you want the least. But again, you know, just keep that in mind as you go with your raid. See if you need it more than five minutes or see just what works best for you. So that is going to be raid. Now for Mythic Plus, there's actually a few builds. So you can see here, oh, I have a few different builds. So... Before you get your tier 30 tier set, which is the one from the current um, raid, this is the build you're going to want to play. Now you can see on the Clash tree, we pick up Chaos Nova by dropping out this thing here. Chaos Nova is just a very powerful stun, uh, very good for us. If you need to pick up stuff like Imprison, it's going to get a little, a little funky on what you have to drop. I'm not going to cover that here today. Uh, you'll probably end up dropping Ventral Retreat and Unrestrained Fury to get up these things. Because uh, again, you, know, you don't really need them too much, so you, you drop this and go like that. I'm gonna close this and open it back up on new changes. Uh, so on the spec tree side here though, you'll notice a few different things. One, we've got Painbringer. So this just basically makes it whenever you consume a soul fragment, you reduce damage. Uh, we consume a lot of soul fragments because of our tier set and just passively in our rotation. So you'll get pretty high uptime on that. Uh, but the main idea here in uh, M plus for the defensiveness before you get your tier set uh, is speed the demon, last resort uh, and stoke the flames. And also dark glare boon, I guess. 
Uh, so this here just gives you a lot of defensiveness. Feed the Demon is really, really good. You consume a lot of soul fragments, which gives you really high uptime of Demon Spikes. That's giving you a ton of armor, a ton of parry chance, a uh, really high uptime of Calcified Spikes as well. Uh, so you're just really tanky whenever you have that up. You have really constant access to those Demon Spikes. Uh, so that's really good if you need that there. There's also something like Last Resort, which is just basically a cheat death every eight minutes, where instead of dying, you just proc your cooldown, Metamorphosis. And Metamorphosis is pretty good not only do you massively increase your uh, armor and HP, you also increase your uh, Fury and Soul Shard, sorry, not Soul Shards, uh, Soul Generation, which are your two resources as Vengeance. So these are very good ways to kind of, you know, proc that, do more damage while also being a bit defensive. However, once you get the new tier set, which by the way, very, very powerful, um, we'll read it off for you here. So the two piece Soul Fragments heal for 10% more. Whenever you generate a slow fragment, you increase your fire damage by 2%, multiple applications overlap. So you can often, uh, this caps at six stacks, but you have often, you know, three to six stacks of this just by playing. And then the four piece, Shear and Fracture, your, spend, uh, your builder, deal fire damage, and after you consume 20 soul fragments, your next cast of those applies firebrand for six seconds to its target. This is very strong. We'll go over its implications in the rotation section. Um, but it's very, very good and will push us into a different build for Mythic Plus. So that build is going to be uh, this one. So you can see here a few things have changed out. So we've dropped basically all the points from the middle of the tree. We've dropped out Painbringer. We've dropped Soak the Flames, Feed the Demon, uh, and Last Resort. We've grabbed Agonizing Flames. You've got Burning Blood. And we come down here to Fire Demise, Burning Alive, Charred Flesh, and Down in Flames. These are going to be very, very powerful for Vengeance because of all their brand interactions. So with the four pieces I mentioned, you get a lot of just free brand ca uh, casts. And Blizzard came through and changed how brand interacts with a bunch of different abilities in this patch. I'm not going to go over that right now. Uh, it's really complex and actually um, Topple from the Vengeance Team Hunter Discord was explaining some stuff to me. Uh, and Vengeance brands are really buggy mess. Actually, fun fact, if you have enough Vengeance Demon Hunters, you can get infinite brand uptime just because of how your tier set works. So that's fun, I guess. Um, that's a side little note. If you want to know about that, uh, drop a comment, I'll explain it. But uh, anyway, so Fire Demise, you have very high uptime of Fiery Brand, so a lot of fire damage. Uh, burning Alive, every two seconds, you spread your brand. Every brand that spreads is gonna be 10 second duration. So this is really good, uh, and will allow you to have very high uptime, near infinite uptime, honestly, with good play, of uh, Fiery Brand in AoE packs. So this is a very powerful utility tool for you. Uh, Charred Flesh just increases the uh, duration whenever Immolation Aura ticks uh, of your Fiery Brands. Now the thing with this, uh, and this is how it was explained to me, so whenever you apply a brand to a target, a hard cast brand or with your tier set, a nine second secret debuff uh, or buff is put on you. And whenever Immolation Aura ticks during that uh, time window, it'll increase the, dam the duration of any brand that got dealt damage by Immolation Aura by 0.5 seconds. However, after that nine seconds ends, uh, then you won't get that increase anymore. So it's important to have your Immolation Aura on uh, whenever you apply your brand's hard cast through either your tier set or you're just pushing the button. Now, spreading brands don't trigger this buff. However, when you have the buff on you, you do increase the duration of those spreaded brands. Uh, so really interesting, uh, weird interaction there. I'll go over it more in depth in the rotation, but that's why we take this talent. Down in Flames is really powerful. Gives you an extra charge of fire brand. Gives you a reduced cooldown. This this talent is kind of crazy, honestly, and is one of the main reasons why we come down here. Uh, and then we're grabbing Leech and Decree. Now you can swap out to Fodder the Flame as well. However, Leech and Decree A is very strong, and B gives you uh, lesser soul fragments, uh, as well as just another one over here whenever you get a, you know, like somebody with a sigil. So you get four soul fragments from this, which is um, like a quarter of the way towards your tier set proc. Uh, so that's pretty powerful, pretty strong, and the damage it deals is really good. So this is like your generic normal um and plus build however if there is one uh that's kind of a bit newer that is coming out for higher fortified keys whenever you need to live uh, and it's being known as feed the dilf which are uh, kind of a funny name so this one drops out the frailty stuff uh instead what it goes for is pain bringer which just gives you a ton of soul fragment stuff to reduce damage it goes for revel in pain which whenever your hard cast brand expires you get a big shield based on how much damage you dealt to them and uh, then it comes down and grabs the very strong talents in Feed the Demon and Last Resort. So this build is based around the idea of just consuming as many souls as possible to get really high uptime of your Demon Spikes, get really high uptime of Painbringer, get really high uptime of Brand. So this is basically the max defensive build. You lose a ton of self-healing and a ton of offensive power by dropping the frailty things, but by picking up Revel in Pain, Feed the Demon, and Last Resort, you gain a ton of defensiveness. So if you're in those high fortified keys right now, I'd say like 23s, 24s, 25s, 
um, then I would say maybe try this one out. Uh, however, if you're doing stuff below that, uh, or uh, I, I would just use the other build, but this build is here and is very strong for those um, very hard hitting melee dungeons. Uh, things with big packs are really good, stuff like Brackenhide, stuff like Freehold, something like Vortex Pinnacle where the pull sizes are very small. I probably wouldn't use this, I'd use the other build. Um, but if you're pulling lots of things, if the trash really hurts, then this build is going to be very good for you. Those are kind of just the four four or five, I guess you could say, uh, builds for Vengeance Demon Hunter. Uh, now we're gonna over to the rotation second and I will tell you guys how to use them. So rotation for Vengeance Demon Hunter is going to be a bit different. So basically there's going to be two things you're playing around. You wanna play around your frailty stacks and your fiery brand debuff. These are gonna be very important because a lot of your abilities are fire-based damage uh, and will gain more damage from fiery brand and also from your frailty stack. So basically you have your three main cooldowns, you have your fell devastation, your hunt, and your soul carver. Uh, for fell devastation, you basically wanna just send this on cooldown at 50 fury. You wanna wait till your main target has two or three stacks of frailty, but that will just happen naturally through your rotation. There's nothing really too much there. You wanna just kinda of send that. Uh, soul carver is going to be the same. Uh, you want your main target to have like six stacks of that if you can. And you also wanna sync up both of these with one cast of fiery brand. So you wanna cast one fiery brand whenever you fell dev and one whenever you soul carver. Uh, the hunt is your last major offensive ability. Uh, and this one you again just wanna use whenever you have six stacks of frailty on the target. Um, you're probably wondering, aren't these defensive options? And yes, but for vengeance, one of the things you have to wrap your head around is a lot of your offensiveness is actually defensiveness because of your frailty things. On top of that, your individual defensive cooldowns just aren't very powerful. So normally it's better to just kind of use them throughout the fight and get more casts of them for more offensive power, more healing, more leech, rather than save them for, you know, big hits. Now, the one, uh, the two exceptions for that are, of course, Metamorphosis, uh, which you can save for a large, large hit because of how much, um, you know, off uh, defensive power this has with HP and armor, and then also uh, demon spikes. Demon spikes you never want to cap on whenever you're actively tanking, right? So you, you just don't, you make sure you're not capping these charges while tanking. Uh, and then during metamorphosis, you do want to cap them because you don't need them during metamorphosis because you have so much armor and HP. Uh, metamorphosis, you can just use um, whenever a big hit's coming that you need to live. You need like a little bit extra survivability. You know, it's a massive HP increase. I have almost 1 million HP right now. I'm roughly 439. 440 eye level um and you could probably have easily over a million if i had just a few different pieces uh then during metamorphosis you get 50 percent extra so you have like 1.5 million hp so not a lot killing you through that you also have 200 percent extra armor uh my armor isn't anything crazy because you know vengeance doesn't have a lot of armor um but you know 200 of 40 is like a lot right so you're gonna get a large reduction during meta so you save meta for big tank busters save um demon spikes so you always have a uh, charge on cooldown while actively tanking and the rest of them you're going to use offensively now the offensive rotation for vengeance demon hunter again is not too complex um the, the most complex time is going to be on the rip and just the things you want to remember are to always pair a charge of fiery brand with both your um soul carver and your fell devastation and then also make sure you have high frailty stacks whenever you use those abilities now, there's a few other things that are going to be important whenever we get to um, our fiery brand and stuff. But on single targets, um, we don't have to worry too much. We can kind of just uh, use it and just do our rotation naturally. Now, the other thing for fiery brand is you do want to have basically 100 fury whenever you go into that. All right, so for the opener, we want to start with our Sigil of Flame to generate fury. Whenever we're under 70 fury, we use that. Put that down, jump in, immolation aura, and we're going to build up to roughly 100 fury, throw our brand on, consume our souls, and then just rip it with a fell devastation. We're gonna build back up some stacks here, grab our souls, spend down with soul cleaver. We're gonna use the hunt when we're at roughly four stacks, build up some more souls, use our brand again, build up some, some stacks again, and then use um, soul carver. And then from here, we're just going to be building uh, with our souls. You wanna be using um, in single target whenever you're under, um, you want to just be spending with Soul Cleaver, uh, Soul Carver, sorry, just to spend out your Fury. Uh, and then whenever you're under a certain amount, like if you're at max, uh, max, max souls with a uh, Fiery Brand on the target, then you can use Soul Bomb, uh, Spirit Bomb. Otherwise, if you're against a single target, you just basically want to be using um, 
spirit spirit bomb uh, as like a last resort to spend everything. It's just lining up your um, frailty stacks with your cooldowns, lining up your fiery brands with your cooldowns. And that's basically it for the single target rotation. Now, if we go over to AoE here, there's gonna be basically the same thing. You wanna just use all your abilities whenever you have uh, stacks of um, soul, uh, frailty as well as your uh, fiery brand on the targets. But the difference here, is that um, you want to be spending with your spirit bomb as much as possible. So on single target, and I did mess it up a bit, I beams it a bit, whatever. On single target, you want to be using um, Soul Carver, Soul Cleave, sorry, um, as basically your main spender, unless you're capped on souls and you have a fire brand on the target. Um, but in AoE, you want to just be using um, Spirit Bomb as much as possible um, because it's just going to be your best spender. You want to use it at 4 plus, and then you want to uh, fill out your Fury Bar. Like if you have extra Fury after, just with Soul Cleave. So Spirit Bomb in AoE is your Soul Spender, and Soul Cleave is your Fury Spender. So it's important to keep that in mind. The other major thing with our tier set, especially for AoE, but in AoE, the major important thing is just to sync up those brands. You still want to be using your... Um, Cooldowns with other, um, with frailty stacks, right? So in AoE, the hunt with three frailty stacks, um, the soul carver with six frailty stacks, at least decree with three frailty stacks, uh, and kind of fell devastation whenever you have 50 fury. So that's kind of going to be the same idea. But the main thing in your AoE rotation is to just always be sending your brand on the highest remaining brand that will live the full time. So again, you know, we'll just build up to a proc here so I can show you guys pretty easily. So mind my rotation. I'm just doing this um, just to just to show you guys build up fury. I know I'm wasting uh, wasting fury there. Just showing you guys build up souls. So that should generate some souls. Suck them in. All right, so we got this here. So we'll throw our brand out. And our brand's gonna tick. My animation roll will extend it. It's gonna spread. Now we'll wait a bit here. Okay, all these things are ticking down, ticking down, ticking down. All animation aura again. I will apply a brand and see it's applying onto the highest duration one there. And now this one's gonna spread. So this one will spread to uh, dummies that don't have it yet. So it's gonna spread. We'll keep going with our durations. Now, if I was doing my full rotation here, I probably could have built back up to another brand proc at this point, And I would use it, let's say on this one. But uh, in this scenario, we'll just use our hard cast brand. We'll extend it again. We'll use this, just kind of build up more souls, get our more soul procs going on here and try and just get another extension. We'll probably do it pretty easily. Boom, we have another one. This is the long duration. Boom, extend it. So it's that simple, right? So in AoE, what you want to do is just build up your frailty stacks. Same thing. You want to spend your souls at four plus of spirit bomb. Use soul cleave um, to spend down your fury, and then just use um, your brand whenever you have full fury. You can spread it around. Uh, try and pair up your emulation aura whenever possible on CD, and then just send your free fractures with the brands into your longest duration one. That's going to give you the best mileage on how to kind of keep your brand spreading. And then again, uh, for your different cooldowns, just basically use uh, Fell Devastation on CD uh, so you get like the most of it. It's going to be a very often CD for you. Um, you want to use Soul Carver with uh, six stacks of frailty. You want to use uh, Decree with three stacks. Uh, the hunt with three stacks. Other than that, just spending um, souls with spirit bomb, spending fury with fracture, just building as many souls as possible. Try not to overcap fury. I overcapped a ton of fury because I was talking and not really focusing and stuff like that. But again, that's going to be kind of the main rotation. Now, hopefully during the segment, there's going to be like a lot of text on screen so you can get a rundown with that. But that is going to be the basic rotation for both single target and AOE. So that is going to be my Vengeance Demon Hunter rotation and talent tree guide. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. Again, big shout out to Topo, Mera, Atame, and all the people down from the Vengeance Demon Hunter Discord for help uh, in all their guides and just help directly with me in putting this together. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll drop the Demon Hunter Discord in the uh, description. So go there, ask them. They're great people, very helpful, and will very happily answer any questions you guys have. So uh, that is going to be it today. If you have any questions for me, drop them in the comments below. I will do my best to help you. I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, if you enjoyed it, of course, drop a like, drop a comment, and hit the sub button. Help me out. And I will see you guys next time with another video. Should be a video out on Friday. So with that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. A big thank you to my channel members, 121, Pain, Zach Ward, It's Bulk, and Flapjack67. You guys are amazing and help me to put out this content that I do for all you guys. If you want to become a channel member, there's a link in the description. You get access to a ton of cool perks, exclusive emotes for comments and live chat whenever I stream on YouTube, as well as a ton of other things and just get to help me make better content. Once again, thank you all so, so, so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.